Hey guys, Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. And a very interesting story came out uh, not so long ago on Motley Fool and on other sites talking about how a lot of folks living in the United States, and I suppose this probably applies to people living all over the world, which is what I've learned in my travels, uh, but how people in the United States don't have much money on hand for an emergency. They don't have a lot of cash on hand. And we've done stories on this. We've talked about the stories that have come out explicitly about um, just kind of the middle class families where they don't have $500 to fix the car or whatever happens. And okay, maybe that's expected with all this talk about wealth inequality and all that. It, it all fits the same narrative that is being pushed. But the Motley Fool story went further and said, well, here's the rub. The average American family that's earning in the six figures, particularly in the low six figures, more than a quarter of them don't have a grand or two lying around for an emergency either. So you figure, okay, you make $100,000 or $150,000, which are numbers that the article references. You think, okay, maybe you have a little bit nicer car and you got to take the BMW in for service and that might cost a thousand bucks. 25% of people don't have between a thousand and two thousand dollars to uh, pay for just whatever comes up in life. And these are people who make low six figures. Now, of course, at Nomad Capitalist, we talk about this, and I've talked a lot about the idea of how water tends to seek its own level. Uh, I have a friend in Denmark who tells me about the partners at the consulting and accounting firms in Copenhagen who they live in a nice house, they drive the nice, highly tariffed car, uh, and they send their kids to the right school and they do all the things to keep up with the Joneses. Even though they make three or four or 500,000 euros a year, they basically don't save anything. And they're basically figuring, hey, I'll just, you know, the job will keep going, the money will keep rolling in, until of course, well, it doesn't. And it's not a great way to build wealth regardless. So it's interesting to see how really no matter how much money you make, obviously when you make millions and millions and millions, then you know, you probably set some money aside. But it's interesting when you're making money at a, just a, a quote unquote normal level, six figures, the average person doesn't have much money set aside. And it's just not a lesson that's taught a lot, I suppose, in the United States. But it is interesting how the government and taxes are really the one element that kind of sets people apart. So think about this. I had a guy who came to me recently for some help. He was an internet marketer doing affiliate marketing um, and he lived in Los Angeles and he was making about $200,000 a year. And he was paying, I think about $85,000 a year in taxes because he didn't have much expenses. The 200 grand was basically profit in his pocket. And so he's paying a little bit more than 40% in tax. You know, he paid $6,000 a month for an apartment as I recall. And he was doing all right. I mean, you know, let's not feel sorry for this guy. He's living in a beautiful part of Los Angeles, but he didn't have a ton of money left over after he paid the bills, got around, you know, had a little fun and paid his taxes. And so what we did is we came and said, okay, well, you're doing affiliate marketing. It's just you, it's location independent. Let's have you live on a beach somewhere in another country where we can get you a tax exemption from the US, totally legal. And you can legally, uh, you know, not have to pay tax on this money because you're not living in the US anymore. And by doing that, we were able to put an extra $85,000 a year in his pocket. And that $85,000 a year is going right into savings because he was already paying $6,000 a month in a rent, which he's not paying uh, where he lives now. He does a lot of traveling. And so he might spend three or four or 5,000 on hotels. And then he has an apartment he spends part time in. So he's saving money on just the cost of living. But that $85,000 in tax is going directly into uh, savings and in his case, it was real estate, right? A lot of people choose real estate. They just want to buy houses and get some rents going. Um, and so if he can save $85,000 a year every year, even just assuming that his uh, income doesn't increase, that's almost a million bucks in a decade. And I think he was 25, 26. So in his mid thirties, he'll have a million dollars just saved. Uh, and that's presuming that his income doesn't increase and he can't save more. That's presuming that He's not going to save more money because he's living for less uh, money than he did in California. So that to me is really the big um, difference between those who have saved money and those who haven't. What happens if you're at that $100,000, $200,000, $500,000 level and you legally no longer have to pay taxes in a country? Could be the US, could be Canada, could be Australia, but I mean, pretty much every country legally gives you a way to leave and say, hey, I'm leaving. Uh, don't tax me anymore uh, under certain conditions. 
what if you had an extra 85 grand? What if you had an extra 50 grand or 200 grand? Could you save then? Could that be the difference in creating wealth? I imagine it could be, and that's why most people who are in the U.S. are stuck.